And he says that his intention isn't to leave Israel behind. Right? They've rejected him. God's plan still moves forward. He brings the Gentiles into the family. And he does it with the intention, he says, to make Israel envious. Now, usually we think of envy as a sin, right? It shows up on different sin lists in the New Testament. There's places where Paul will talk about the acts of the flesh, and envy is usually on one of those lists as a way to say, avoid envy. Envy is not good. And so it raises the question, does that mean God is intentionally trying to provoke Israel to sin? He's trying to provoke envy. He wants to make them envious of what the Gentiles have. Now, usually envy surfaces when we see that someone else has something or finds themselves in a situation that we can't have. They have something that we can't have. They're in a situation that we are not in. And so we look at what they're experiencing and we think to ourselves, oh, I want that. How do I get that, right? Envy usually surfaces when we see someone else experiencing something or have something that we don't have. Like I can remember about 10 years ago, it was summer, we were at the pool and hanging out with our family, and there was another guy from our church who was also at the pool with his family. Now, our kids at this point were four, two, and just under one. And this guy was there. We said hi to him. We greeted him, chatted for a minute. We went to our side of the pool. He went to his side of the pool. He was there with his family. His kids were 10, 12, and 14. And I remember at one point, I look across the way, and he's just lounging in a chair, having a fantastic time. He's got his earbuds in, listening to something. He's got a book that he's reading. He's drinking something. Every once in a while, he takes his earbuds out. He, like, you know, talks to his kids from across the pool. He puts them back in and just goes back to enjoying himself. Me, on the other hand, I'm on the other side of the pool, just, like, keeping the kids alive. Don't die. Don't fall in the pool. Just keep going over this way. Somebody's jumping into the pool without supervision, without their floaties on. Somebody has to go to the bathroom. Somebody needs their diaper change. We've lost one kid. Where are they? Like, the whole goal of that pool trip was keep the kids alive. Don't let them die. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah, people have been there before. Many of you are still in that stage of life. And I remember seeing this guy on the other side of the pool thinking like, I want that in the worst way, right? Now, but here's the difference between what I experienced then, what Paul is talking about with the Gentiles, and envy being a sin— is that when envy is a sin, it usually is combined with anger. It usually is combined with resentment and bitterness and some measure of covetousness and jealousy, right? There's something in you that's deeper than just like, oh, that would be nice to have. It's like, oh, I'm owed that thing. And so Paul isn't saying that God wants to provoke the Israelites to sin so that the resentful and bitter against the Gentiles... He wants them to see that the Gentiles have something that they should also want. The other distinction between what I was experiencing in that moment and uh, what Paul is trying to talk about here with the Gentiles and the Israelites is that at some level, envy looks at something that someone has or an experience that they have that you, for whatever reason, maybe can't have. But what Paul is saying here is that the thing that the Gentiles have is readily available, not just to Israel, but to everyone. Like God is trying to get people to receive the thing that he's giving. So it's not as though the Gentiles have something that Israel can't have. They have something that God, in fact, wants to give to Israel. He wants to bring people into his family. He wants to extend his grace and salvation. And he wants us to live in a way so that people who aren't followers of Jesus can look at our lives and be like, oh, there's something distinct about them. There's something different. There's something attractive. They have something in their life that I don't have, and I'm curious about what it is. And not only that, but God wants us to live in a certain way, 
and communicate to these people, to the world, that they, in fact, can have what we have. It's not something exclusive. It's not something reserved for those who are on moral high ground. It's for anybody and everybody who is willing to surrender their life to Jesus. It is available to all. And so the question for us is, are we living our lives in a way that the world sees what we have and they want it and they're curious about it? And are we communicating to them, living in such a way where we are saying to them, it's yours for the taking because Jesus is open to all.